Welcome to the first ever ASMR FL Studio tutorial. This is Emphasis, one of the new plugins inside of FL Studio 2025. We're going to be looking at what all of these controls do and how you can use them to make your songs louder. This is a song I have generated inside of Suno AI about poop. Have you seen the news today? Johnny ate an apple, but it didn't decay. At the very left, we have input gain. This is the same as any other limiter. Now that's just going to control how hard your song is being fed into the limiter. At what volume is that before it goes into the limiter. So we can hear what that sounds like if you like. Have you seen the news today? Johnny ate an apple but it didn't decay. Under the enhancement tab we have a few different modes. Versatile, loud, transient, steady. Versatile is just for overall just probably the best thing to use for most music but sometimes it would be beneficial to use one of these other modes because if you have a dubstep track you probably just want that shit to be very loud and transient would be great for something like drums where you're trying to do more of a transient shaping thing steady mode applies saturation to all of the loudest parts across the whole thingy so it's good for overall loudness now we have this emphasis knob basically you can just think of this as a depth or intensity knob the higher it is the harder the limiter is going to be working so i'm just going to take the emphasis from zero to 100 real quick so you can see what it's doing to the sound have you seen the news today johnny ate an apple but it didn't decay instead it came up out the toilet next we have envelope Think of this as an attack and release knob put together. All the way set at one is going to basically be a short attack and a short release. And it's going to bring out the transients more. The higher you go up is basically a longer attack and longer release. So for something like drums, you'd want to keep this to the bottom. But if you want overall loudness, it's probably best to give it higher volumes. Let's listen to what the envelope does. Let's start it at one where it'll have a short attack and short release. Have you seen the news today? Johnny ate an apple but it didn't decay. Instead it came up out the toilet. Maybe I have untrained ears, but I can't really hear much of a difference there. Now this hardness knob, you can really think of this as a knob between soft clipping to hard clipping. Have you seen the news today? Johnny ate an apple but it didn't decay. Instead it came up out the toilet. Next up, we have routing. We've got left, right, and mid side so you can change which mode that is and then you have a linking knob so this linking knob is going to control how much the stereo image is processed together versus independently so if you have this on mid side mode and you have it all the way zero the sides and the mid channel are going to be processed completely independently so that can be good if you have a bunch of creative stereo effects like things going on in the left ear sometimes like hard pan left and things going on in the right ear or if you use a lot of like panomatic or something like that but if you want a stable stereo image you would just bring that up so if you just have a regular song nothing crazy going on in the stereo field i uh, just leave that up but if you want those left to right ear things to be more pronounced leave that lower and then we have the output knob which is just the output gain so next up we've got these little visual meters one cool thing about this limiter is it has luffs this one all the way to the right is luffs and you can change between integrated short term and momentary when I'm mastering I don't even pay attention to luffs I just master based on reference tracks I don't know what to tell you about luffs and this is gain reduction as far as I understand is just how much the sound is being limited and brought down before it's being maximized afterwards and the very last thing we have down here are these little doohickeys in this bitch right here the true peak which is something you probably just always want to have turned on for the final master because what this does is catches all the intersample peaks which basically occur when your waveform is converted from digital to analog the digital waveforms that you see on FL studio when they're converted to analog like sound that you can actually hear the waveform 
is reconstructed to be analog and that can sometimes cause problems and distortion because it might make those volumes or those peaks louder so this is true peak limiting to get rid of that and next we've got oversampling which a lot of fl studio plugins have on the default preset this was set to 4x so i guess that means that's a good spot to keep it but basically that's like better quality if you're thinking of it like an image it's like oversampling is more pixels because more pixels give you a clearer image and we've got a bypass button that just turns the limiter off and then one pretty cool thing that i like is delta and this is going to only show you what the limiter is adding. So if there's any distortion going on, this is a good way to check it. So I'm going to enable Delta and play the track so you can hear that. And now level matching. This is important if you want to hear what the limiter is actually doing. Because the limiter is going to increase the overall loudness of your track. So when you hear that compared to the original signal, it's just going to sound better to you because it's louder. That's a fallacy with our ears. So level matching keeps the real volume the same as the original sound so that you only hear what the limiter is actually doing to the sound. I hope this was helpful and if there's anything else you want to learn about FL Studio, let me know in the comments and I'll probably do that shit. Mm -hmm.